On July 7, 1977, 134 FBI agents stormed into Scientology centers in Washington and Los Angeles. We hit the front page of every newspaper in the country at that time. At an official press conference, the church claimed that its stance against the obscure Alaskan mental health bill had made it a target of the White House. We put out a publication, and uh, Richard Nixon, who was vice president at that time, was in favor of this bill. And we attacked the bill and said that it's, uh, it's totally oppressive. And within two days, the Secret Service burst into our church and <coughs> threatened us never to use Nixon's name again, and that they were sent here on express orders of Richard Nixon. So we're not a quiet group. It was revealed that the Church of Scientology was one of the top targets of uh, the Nixon White House and was on the infamous Nixon enemies list, White House list. But the raids revealed that Operation Snow White had gone too far. Members of the Guardian's office, in an attempt to prove a conspiracy against the church, had been robbing government files and infiltrating federal agencies. They started burglarizing government files, burglarizing media files, burglarizing psychi psychiatrist files. And uh, one of the intelligence boys walked off and told the story to the Department of Justice which had began to piece some things together. Several top Scientologists were arrested. Hubbard's wife, Mary Sue, was among those jailed for the crimes. Suddenly this was no longer just a little thing on the side that some people were doing, like meditation and uh, chanting. This was something that was taking on the federal government, taking on the media, taking on professionals, taking on judges, and that's when Hubbard became the focus. But Hubbard had vanished. After, after the raid of 77, uh, Hubbard went into serious hiding. He was at one point hiding at a place between Los Angeles and Palm Springs out there in the, the edge of the desert. Back in Los Angeles, church officials were dealing with a public relations nightmare. With the raid of 77, they got all of our files. They got our secret packs. They got the stuff that we studied. They began to get the directives regarding how this is all done so suddenly the magic act was gone most damaging were files showing that the church waged war on its critics by dead agenting them and now dead agenting somebody means making them not be credible anymore by reason of showing the world the dirt the real dirt on them he wrote uh, at one point uh, investigate those who attack us make it as rough as possible spread lurid lies one example of this policy captured the media's attention. The FBI discovered Scientology's documents explaining what they were doing to Paulette Cooper uh, and how they were doing it. In 1971, Cooper had written The Scandal of Scientology. She was the first person who ever wrote a book critical of Scientology and in furtherance of their opportunistic policy of retribution called Fair Game, uh, set her up. Operation Freakout was used to intimidate Cooper. An anonymous letter was sent to all the tenants of the apartment block she was in, I think it was something like 200 people, saying that she was a child molester. They also hired a private investigator to go to her door and put a gun to her head, uh, unloaded, but pulled the trigger. The, the final trick was they, somebody somehow got her fingerprints on a piece of paper and they then wrote a bomb threat on this piece of paper and sent it to an Israeli embassy. So the FBI were around there and arrested her. Paulette Cooper was driven very, very close to the brink of, of a total nervous breakdown by what happened to her. Really, it was a pretty stupid thing to do. But they stepped outside the law. They were thrown out of the church. Paulette Cooper refused to be interviewed for this program, citing fears of harassment by Scientology. The church claimed Hubbard knew nothing of Operation Freakout and promised it was restructuring the church. There was a reorganization that took place in order to structure the church so that nothing like that could ever happen again. What happened in 1982 was that Church of Scientology expelled something like 600 members. And we were told, as you'll probably remember, that we weren't allowed to talk to these people. The bad press had damaged the church, which many began to describe as a cult. The 80s found the anti-cult movement flourishing. 
the shocking images of Jim Jones and hundreds of his followers dead from cyanide-laced Kool-Aid, still fresh in the American psyche. The sensational treatment of the incident alarmed Scientology. Jim Jones and his activity was really a fairly mainstream Christian church. They weren't some weird gang that was, uh, you know, just being invented by a, a Johnny Come Lately. They were, they were Christian. Now, what happened to them? I don't know. But I know what happened in the world as a result of what happened in Jonestown, which was you had the new N word, the C word, Jonestown cult. Cult bad. Cult Scientology. The word cult can be used, and you can imply there's a huge threat. You can imply that suddenly this organization has got its tentacles everywhere. Was the Church of Scientology a cult or a religion? In 1982, the city of Clearwater called official hearings on the matter. The church was accused of plotting to take over the city. Ex-members came forward to recount their horror stories about the church. At the hearings, former Sea Organization Captain Scott Mayer spoke about life on the ship with Hubbard. We all heard him from time to time screaming and yelling uh, on the ship at somebody who had an incredibly fierce temper. Anybody at any time could be put down in the bilges, or put up on the rails and tossed overboard. I mean, somebody would fish them out, but it was mostly the humiliation factor of being, you know, like the old walking the plank. Supposed illegal activities on board the ships were also revealed. Telex transmissions were used to set up uh, fun smuggling, and he had a couple million dollars in the strong box right on Apollo. The notion that Scientology was a dangerous cult was furthered by bizarre tales about the Rehabilitation Project Force, a discipline program where sea organization members perform hard labor you can make any religion sound really dumb. Suppose if you said there's a cult in which the members of this cult, the Christian cult, and they go around and they eat a biscuit which they say is the body of their God and they drink wine which they say is the blood of their God and this is a ritual. You could make this sound absurd. What's happened with Scientology is that it's become like the representative demon cult. But was Scientology a sect that endangered its own devotees or an unjustly demonized emerging religion? The policies of the church were now coming under increasing scrutiny. And the critics want some definitive answers from its founder, L. Ron Hubbard. But where was he 